It's decided. It's we have time. mains and alts after ranking all of the mains, potential mains and potential alts last week. It's this time around that we are going to take you through our thought process and reasoning behind deciding. First of all, what we're going to make for 10.1, the new raid yeah. and Mythic Plus season and all of that. And also talk a little about our first alts that we're going to like pair up. In parallel, we're going to take care of uh, some of our alts because we have a lot of tunes now at 70. Oh, for so sure. It's going to be an easier time. Yeah, it's, it's always good to have these conversations because people always have issues with what deciding on what to main, what, what to, to alt. And it's like, uh, why, 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 why? And it's kind of hard to answer these questions without context. And this is what we're going to do today is like, give you guys the context of why we chose uh, some of the the characters that we chose, and uh, yeah, let's, hopefully, uh, hopefully this will help you out as well if you're undecided, or at least uh, see how we think about these things. And sure. whenever like there's a new patch, we always pick up a new main and understand how and why we decide on specific things. Uh, so I guess we're gonna start it off with you, Flame. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this was a uh, quite a quite a little bit in the work. Uh, I've decided to swap from healer to DPS oh, in, no. uh, in the next season. A couple of months ago, I have achieved my healer goals. It was supposed to be like a challenge for me. I did have specific goals in mind as maining healer for the first time, and that's good. So I'm going back to DPS. For the main reason as to why I'm maining a DPS and not like tank or healer is mostly because I feel like DPSers not necessarily contribute more, but it feels like you can keep growing your utility and your addition to the team whereas tanks become like almost unkillable after a couple of weeks in the raid and healers yep. pretty much have nothing to do except start to do dps which is fine but that's both tanks so at that point when i'm i'm why not just dps all together than having to figure out how to dps more with healers and tanks yeah, plus, plus it's a it's an improvement game that takes way longer right you keep on getting new stuff and keep on improving yourself and like at least this is something we enjoy it's, when playing DPS. Yeah, well, like in, always can, getting higher for sure. and higher. You can all, the thing is with improvement happens on all across all uh, all roles but DPS seems to contribute more and more because at the end of the day at the end of the patch the more damage you have the faster the boss dies so and, and everybody can do that healers and tanks too but if, if that's your goal to like help kill the boss quicker, why not just play damage? Yeah. Okay. So that out so of the is, way. What is it? It's a warlock. Oh it's no, a warlock. what? It's Wasn't been it a, Shadow Priest? Wasn't it Boomkin? Wasn't it was it? <laughs> actually. So Shadow Priest and Boomkins are the specs that I've, the characters at the very least that I feel are some of the most fun. It's probably even more fun than Warlock. However, Warlock has always been my favorite go-to casters prior to, to Dragonflight. So I, it, I always had a uh, place in it in my heart together with another spec that we'll talk about in the alt uh, section. But the main reason why I picked Warlock is because our guild actually needs Warlocks. And uh, we've seen firsthand how important Warlocks can be on Senarth, for instance. You, you can never go wrong without Jesus. a Warlock or two or three in your team. They just have so many good things. So yeah, utility, I guess, was the first part, plus the, the requirements and necessities for our guild, because that's a big factor as well. Yeah, right? we want we want to push, uh, hopefully, cutting edge next season. So, you know, making the raid, the bosses easier and so on. Uh, is more reliable with Warlocks. I mean, you main Warlocks there that are already mythic, you know what I'm talking about, because I've heard this uh, this argument before. It's like, yeah, my raid kind of doesn't want me to swap for Warlock, because we need the gate, and it yeah. does trivialize a lot of mechanics. That's one thing. The other thing about Warlock, specifically Warlock, not one specific spec, because I will be playing all three, mostly Destro and Demo from the looks of it until Affliction gets some buffs, is that the specs are actually good on probably all boss fights, pretty much all boss fights, are good, uh, our uh, Warlock is gonna be good with at least one spec for the fight. And by good, I don't mean it's like it's gonna do okay. No, it's gonna, probably gonna do really well, unless they're gonna get, get cranked in the head. But I don't know if Warlock actually needs, if it's like an OP spec or whatever. No, the damage profile is nice. The utility kit is nice to help, you know, help you with the fight mechanics. You have single target fights with Destro, which are gonna be really good, especially in the patchwork style fights where you don't have to move a lot. If you do have to move a little bit, you can go back to Nether Portal or uh, what was the, the name of it? Uh, no, N Nether Portal or Immutable Hatred for Destruction, which uh, for Demo, which is also really good for single target. You have Demo uh, as a spec, which is probably the most complete out of all the Warlock specs, where you have access to different tools that can augment your playstyle in terms of different fights that you're going to have. If you have adds, you can take Implosion, you can do AoE in two or three different ways, you can do heavy single target with Reign of Tyranny, especially with a tier set that is, is going to give you Grimoire Felgar for every Tyrant, period which is something that finally Warlock's uh, demo demonology can do. So you do have that versatility. Destro has the raw damage. Destro is just a powerhouse. 
And whether you like or not Channel Demon Fire, it is going to stick around. I hope that they take this lesson into maybe making Channel Demon Fire a more interesting spell to play in the future. Affliction is probably the one that's suffering a little bit in terms of numbers. It's not doing that, that well. I think uh, the numbers that initially had that made it competitive were bugs that were fixed from, uh, from what I was able to figure out. Um, other people have tested this out. So I'm hoping that eventually we'll get buffs. But this is kind of like the gist of why I'm in Warlock. First of all, helping the guild. Second of all, it's actually a good DPS pack to have to help your, your group out to, you know, push the content. Jake, breathe now. It's fine. <laughs> you can breathe. <laughs> well, I guess in like having a pure DPS uh, class to play is always helpful because, and I've seen this firsthand with Rogue, because there's obviously, there's going to be moments where you would be like much more... Um, required or reliable on a specific fight or in a specific dungeon to switch between specs as yeah. opposed to like a hybrid but you don't really have that unless you're a druid like you know switching from boomy to feral but it's like totally separate play styles so warlock you have like the the class not any spec but you're probably gonna play a lot of demo man because i know you like yeah, demo. demo is like my favorite but uh, lords and all of that shut yeah. up yeah yeah uh well let's uh talk about uh what we consider to be non-meta specs and <laughs> have a little uh, trip down history lane because survival uh, hunter wait yeah, no. yeah so here's uh because this is the thing we both we we've ranked these to your spec that's gonna main your well your class and the, the one i'm gonna play on s tier so uh before all of you start jumping in with forks uh saying that we always play s tier specs or meta specs or whatever um back in uh Battle for Azeroth, right? So that when we start 8.2, you played shaman. Elemental Shaman, I played Survival Hunter, was required to switch to BM because yeah. they didn't really do much. But I loved, I, I, when I could, I played Survival Hunter. That was that was the first thing. Um, then No, that was 8.1. Uh, 8.2, I played Red Paladin, uh, you played BM, uh, Hunter. BM Hunter. In 8.3, I played Havoc, and that was only because the, I needed to, I wanted to help out the guild, and you played Blood Decay, if I remember yeah. correctly, right? Um, so, talk about meta specs for, for a little while. Then Shadowlands came along, we played Enhancement, Season and one. Feral Druid. That this was, was like that was the, so not meta. There was, yeah, not meta uh, at all. Then 8.1 came around, you played Survival Hunter, yeah. uh, which was not the Degenerate yet. It, it was the prior degenerate to the will, will, will come, right? It was far away from meta, as you uh, could possibly go. And I think go. I played Subrogue, right? Subrogue, which yeah. became very strong l later on. I one, didn't, I didn't expect it. From yeah, yeah. I wanted, like, basically, I wanted to play Rogue back then, uh, sub just to, just for those daggers. And the spec didn't become meta, like, really. It, it took a while before it became meta. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, then we had 9.2. You played Prot Warrior, which <laughs> was the least favorite uh, uh, yeah. tank spec. And I played Red Paladin once again. And, you know, that, that was... B really yeah, far I think, from I think meta. Dragonfly just so happened to be... Uh, it, it turned out that way that Preservation became S-tier yeah. and uh, Sub became... Or uh, no, I, Outlaw. I played Outlaw, yeah. Outlaw that's the thing. When we decided what to main for Dragonfly, we we like went through all of the specs and, and all of that stuff. Plus, the guild kind of asked us way earlier on what you, you guys going to main so they can make the roster and all of that stuff. We didn't really expect like any of the, the specs we played to become meta. So I played Outlaw, then like switched to sub because sub became strong for, for specific Mythic Plus dungeons and stuff. Uh, Flame play Preservation. Now, with that concluded, uh, I'm going to play Red Paladin. Red Paladin has always going to be, uh, was always my main. I didn't like at all what they did to it in Dragonflight first off because I would have played it. I finished 9.2 uh, 9 with Red Paladin. I was planning on moving forward with it. Uh, but the changes were really shit. The rework got me back in and I love playing it. I don't care how much damage it will do at the end of the day. I really don't. Uh, first off, as Flame here, I wanted to bring something useful to the team. And I know I can bring something useful to the team for the rate progression with buffs, with off heals, with cleanses, with freedoms. Not to mention the retribution aura, which is really good for tanks as well. That's really important. Unbound freedom is another good talent that I know holy... Holy Paladins don't have. I think Prot Paladins have access to that, but I'm not sure if our team will have a Prot Paladin tanking. So, apart from all of the utility, the rework got me engaged in the sense that you could never have something uh, as flexible in terms of builds previous to this. So I can go for the full single target build with, with, a, with a proper functioning one-minute build 
that doesn't require you to line up three million different stars and be super punished <laughs> for fucking up. As much as I love the one minute build, and I know a lot of people didn't, this version of it right now is really, really good because it compensates. It compensates for you not having access to that one minute just yet. So you don't want to be a spec where you will do a lot of damage only with your buffs up. That's the main thing. That was always the main stigma of Red Paladins. When once Wings was up, once uh, Final Reckoning was up and Execution says, oh my God, the meters will blast. After that, just stick it with like, you know, little wooden little chopsticks yeah chopsticks it was it was ridiculous that's not the case anymore there's a lot of talents that compensate for that you're not going to be like a giga beast and i don't see red paladins becoming meta because i've seen like the the latest ptr streams on the raid red paladins were nowhere near the top and i'm fine with that i just love playing it and if i play it to my best i'm probably going to do okay and help contribute to it not to mention Mythic Plus is always a blast with a Red Paladin now. Why? Because you can move a lot, and if you cannot move a lot, you have a lot of range. A lot of abilities are now a lot more easier to deal with because of the extra range you would have for like Blade of Justice and Templar's Verdict and, and uh, no, Final Verdict. Judgment was always uh, a ranged ability. So you have options. Uh, there's also the the capacity now to like have hybrid builds so you can have if there's a fight where there's not giga aoe but there's still a priority target and some cleave you can have that you can still have like very strong single target damage and very decent cleave and that also goes vice versa you can go like giga aoe with some decent focus damage this was not possible with the first iteration of the red paladin uh build in Dragonflight. Well, Consecration didn't do that for you, man? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Consecration. Since you brought it up, the only thing that I, I, I'm kind of sad about when it comes to Red Paladins is that uh, Divine Hammer isn't doing great. I was so happy we brought this back. It's it's the, the little hammers that replace Consecration. Consecration is replaced like super passive. Okay. You don't really care. You don't need to press anymore. The, they, they got the feedback with it. It's just, you know, pop your blade of justice. There's a consecration on the ground. Great. I don't care. Just have it there. I don't mind it. Uh, but the fine hammer was really, really cool when they introduced it in Legion. And I'm hoping maybe they would tune some numbers to have it be a little bit more competitive. Because right now, you just take the, the other talent, which is like the consecrated blade. As I've said, you drop a blade down, you have consecration. So I would love to just get rid of consecration forever and have the fine hammer be the go-to for like cleaving aoe but that's you know something in in terms of like wishful thinking class fantasy is also really important for both of us i think oh, here yeah, for sure and uh goes this goes without saying it's it's one of like the flashiest and most beautiful specs to look at they also imp not improve but they have the, the the proper sounds i just cannot get enough of the final verdict sound like <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> sound effect. Here on our center line, everybody, you're getting it. And the, dude, the animation. So I feel like a holy warrior. Like whenever I I have like my four holy powers and throw that final verdict from a distance, you see that big ass hammer like filled with light just. Ah, going dude, there. that was I, it's I, I, amazing. I, that's basically what made me uh, really, really enjoy uh, Paladin back in Shadowlands when they added Final Verdict as legendary for single target. I felt like that was really cool, and yeah. the fact that it had it had a smaller range than I know it's bigger now. But then the fact that it had a little bit of range, I was like, oh my god, I can actually like step out a little bit of the puddle and still do an ability. It's yeah. not you know range spec, but. I think that's like it's, way better now. The thing is, the animation for it back in in Wad when they introduced it, it was smaller. So the hammer was, it was like smallish, right? When they put it into in Shadowlands, they made that shit bigger, yeah. so it, it just feels more meaty, more impactful. Um, there's there's a lot to talk about when it comes to like the flexibility of a build for Red Paladin, and I'm saying Red Paladins are going to be 100% required for the raids, but they are going to bring a lot more stuff than in the past. You cannot really make an argument, let's say. Oh, should I bring a Warlock or should I bring a Paladin? Well, you're going to bring the Warlock because it definitely has more proper, like, impactful utility. However, it's a lot a lot more arguments to be made as a nice to have for uh, joining or having a Paladin join your team, regardless if it's Mythic Plus or uh, the Raid. Not talking PvP here. PvP is broken as shit. And <laughs> we're not addressing that here. So overall, um, this, this is kind of like why... I've decided for the Red Paladin. It, it can boil down to just, I always loved this spec. It was my first spec, like for years, years and years, always had this leveled first in every expansion. 
But then they fucked this back up. And this, this was actually the first expansion where I did not like to play Red Paladin. The first. I've enjoyed playing my Paladin in BFA, in Shadowlands, in, in well, Legion, obviously. In you know, a Warlords of Draenor, I think it was the best time ever for it. Uh, but Dragonflight, it was the worst for me. It, it's biased, I know. That's this is just me. But, so it's fair. I, I kind of kind of agree. The initial, but yeah. it had to go through that to come to where yeah. it is right now. Where I think we can actually say that wow, Red actually brings stuff to the team because you mentioned this before, and I remember back in. Uh, Sepulchre when uh, you were the immune dude. Hey, immune, <laughs> immune that, immune that, and that sucked because you didn't really have a lot of tankiness, but now you can do that, also yeah. have tankiness, and also, I think Red Aura is finally useful, yeah. so... Yeah, they finally addressed that we've been complaining about for years. Okay, let's quickly talk about alts. Sure. Uh, you, you mentioned that you are decided on an alt, yes, another I favorite. Yes, I have uh, about two alts, but the main one that I'm thinking about right now is also going back to my roots, which is uh, Shaman. What Shaman. the? I thought, dude, I thought it was Warrior. I don't know no, why. No, 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 no. Shaman was always my first. That was my first character. The first one that I leveled, the first one that I always. Ah, yes. It's yes, the yes. Warrior and Shaman and Warlock have kind of like, you know, intertwined. But <laughs> but uh, Shaman is actually really cool. I didn't really feel too attracted to Shaman going into Dragonflight because it, feel like, it felt like the ideal spec. It felt too good. It was perfect, man. <laughs> enhance, enhancement was slapping big time, and enhancement is my, my thing. Um, and Resto was uh, kind of okay. Resto was always a favorite of mine. But the, what I actually kind of really fell in love with is Elemental, dude. The really? Elemental from beta to what it is now, it's like if you think enhancement is difficult. Yeah, oh, no, I, dude, I, I always felt Elemental was uh, a Ele difficult spec to play in. So it Elemental, scares me. Elemental always had a lot of things to juggle, but some of them didn't really matter too much. Like Master of the Elements, I remember back in Shadowlands and probably end of BFA, it was okay, but it, you weren't really focusing on it. But now you have that plus a bunch more stuff and the concept of making targets lightning rods and then you just spam lightning on them or if mountains fall and earthquakes double with overload that just that they really make made elemental feel like okay you're breaking the earth to, to crush the enemies damage kind of pulled it away from this because it, it didn't really do that much at the beginning of season one but now it's kind of picking up a lot of steam it's looking to be also a really good dps spec next year depending on how they're going to be tuning it but also i'm happy to go back into enhancement and Finally, I can actually play a healer that I really, really enjoy because preservation kind of oh, dropped for yeah. me. Resto he always, Shaman. He always plays uh, Resto Shaman for I, I, at least like whenever we did dungeons back in the day and all of that. Yeah. In arenas too, you also like choose. It's 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 one of the more uh, satisfying healers to play because uh, I like. It. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, for me, it's a no-brainer. The, the first alt is gonna be Rogue. Uh, I think I've covered uh, in previous videos why I always loved playing Rogue. It was always like Red and Rogue. It's like. Paladin and Rogue were, were always my, my first two, whatever, mm. whatever the seasons, whatever happened. Rogues kind of always were more or less needed in some capacity in whatever content. They're just good like that. I don't really care if they like, you know, any spec is becoming metal or whatever. I love playing Outlaw. I love playing Sub. Sub is my first go-to. Uh, and I also love playing Assassination. Uh, not in Mythic sure. Plus, though, but that's a diff different story. So R Rogue is going to be like a no-brainer is going to be there. But the second one, uh, like just being on the same level, is going to be the Mage because I miss Ooh. playing my Mage. Well, yeah, man, because I miss playing it. Like I, last time I played it like more properly was in Shadowlands Season 1. And then, you know... Yeah, the, you, have, you haven't played a cash and Listen, man, Dragonflight is the perfect expansion for you to play a cash Yeah, well, I know. I, I, heard about, <laughs> I heard about those rumors. But yeah, Fire Mage more specifically. I also played uh, Frost a little bit, but my my first love was always Fire. I just love, like, the bombastic, super low cooldown combustion playstyle. I love that they introduced a lot of, like, the former legendaries baked into talents right now with Pyroclasm and all of that. So I, I love it. Dude, and they I actually, love, they actually the made... I don't, but that's yeah, a different story. But they actually made Fire really good by making Torns able to be fire mages now because of the passives and the rage. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a stun as a mage. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get into all of that. <laughs> look, look at him. Look at him. Uh, I'm probably still going to be either an undead or a female orc. That's besides the point. So this just... Just to like have it, um, not gonna go into too much detail for alts. It's like a lot more personal preference and stuff. Yeah, we're probably gonna play more than this, but this will this will probably this will be, be the, the first the, ones yeah. to like get get going and, and giving up content and all of that. on the channel for them as well. Yeah, for for sure. So um, that you, don't you have like a second alt? Uh, yeah, I do have. Um, I was debating between because uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start season two. I played a bunch of stuff. I played a lot of druid. I played a lot of hunter. I played a lot of priest. 
and I'm fine with it. And I think I'm going to go season two fresh. Obviously, Warlock, Shaman, and... DK. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, I was, I was I've been missing that. playing my Blood Decay in a long time. And I was Unholy, man. Unholy. Unholy was my go-to spec for sure. Um, but after the podcast with the boys, I was like, oh, well, they, they're kind of taking a lot of the stuff that's fun about Unholy. But after the buffs, I'm like, okay. Looking so, appealing. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So that will probably be the tank that will be playing in the dungeons and also the DPS as well. But yeah, I'm going back to my DK. It's looking really good. The Frost is actually made more interesting with the tier set, and I cannot wait to play to handle the Blitz. And Blood is just Blood. Blood is your second hero in the group. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so this is it. We're gonna have uh, Red Paladin, Rogue, whatever spec, doesn't matter, and Mage, Fire, or Frost. Sure. It's not really touching Arcane. And then you're going to have Warlock, Shaman, and DK. That's it. So hopefully this was helpful and our, our thought process behind all of this. If it was, let us know in the comments or at least let us know what you're going to be maining in 10.1. As always, thank you Patreons for Shit supporting it. the content. You want to check the link in the description. Uh, check all of the tiers. See the goodies that you're going to get access to plus supporting all of the content we do yep. here at Marcelian Online. Shit it. Thank you for watching the video and we will uh, catch you in the next one. All right. Bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wow Still, I play wow Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wow Still, I play wow It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wow